All right, guys, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about the grinder months, the grinder time of year. September is a time of year when you're fishing. The days are getting shorter. That means some of these fish's biological clock is moving. Like they know what time it's getting to be. They know that, you know, them shad start migrating, them bass start migrating, them bluegill start to get up there really, really shallow this time of year. So them bass, they know it's time to eat. And these fish hunt a lot in September. I'm gonna kind of walk y'all through my three favorite baits for September anywhere you go. Now, I'm a little hard-headed. I'm a little stubborn. I fish in the south a lot. So if it's gonna be me fishing, not trying to get very many bites, it's gonna be a Spro Poppin' Frog 65, and I'm gonna be flipping like a 13 Fishing Invader. But now that is not always the cookie cutter recipe. So I've got three baits that I think are probably actually a better option all around, a more optimal approach to catching a lot of bites and catching a lot of big ones. So I'm gonna kind of go through three kind of staples for this time of year. And a lot of people do this time of year a little different than I do. A lot of people are still kind of running around fishing those brush piles, those deep ledges, you know, that offshore house foundations, all that stuff where it's offshore. The fish are still out there. There's still some out there, but they'll really get busted up this time of year. Thermocline starts to get shallower this time of year. The baits start having to move shallower this time of year. I like to grind shallow. I like to fish on the bank. I like to fish where I can see fish. I see a lot of fish swimming around this time of year. I like to sight fish for some, but for the most part, I cover a ton of water. I try to fish ambush places where the fish are gonna kind of sit up obvious places and attack those shad, attack those bluegills. So for me, it's really a running gun time of year, even more than any other time of the year, to be honest with you. This is probably the most running gun time of the year that I ever fish, is this September, October kind of time frame. September's a really big month because you can still catch some really big ones up shallow though. But so, few baits. Number one, and this is a brand new one. I've only been throwing this bait for a month and a half, two months, but this is the Spro Haint Topwater. Kind of similar to some other topwaters, but one of the cool things about this is it's very, very loud topwater bait. It's very loud, but it still has a very subtle action on the water. This is the bigger size, has three hooks on it from the factory. This one in particular has one hook on it, and that's because somebody was wearing this like a piece of leg jewelry at one point not too long ago. So this hook got in somebody, so we had to do a little bit of doctor work on them. But this is the bait that I've been throwing a lot, I've been catching a lot of fish on this on this bait. I've got a smaller one too with two hooks. It's really good around spotted bass and stuff like that. But I really like to cover water with top water this time of year. And the cool thing about this bait is you can throw it up there in six inches of water and walk it down a clay bank, or you can throw it out over a 10 foot deep rock point and work it out there and you know catch them anywhere in between. So it's not like a, a frog where you don't really want to throw it in open water. It's kind of a better all around bait this time of year because you can just throw it literally anywhere. If those fish can see it, they're likely to come up and get it. So one of my favorite baits that I've been throwing recently, been catching a lot of fish on this thing recently though, but spotted bass have been chewing that sucker. Now, the next one, this is a staple now. There was a time not that long ago where square bill crank crankbaits were not really a 12 month out of the year deal and now they definitely are by the way these are high waters creations tackle tags I, i'm sure y'all have seen these on my boxes for a while but this is a good buddy of mine owns the company you know i'm not sponsored by them but i just like using them you know they make a really good product so i just i just use them but square bill crankbaits i remember when i first started fishing you would hear about them pre-spawn and you would hear about them when it was really hot around cypress trees and stuff but you didn't really hear about them as just a grinding bait all year round and now it definitely is like a lot of us catch fish on it all the time got two of them that i really throw a lot but i'm going to show y'all the one that this time of year seems to trigger them really good because of the profile and that is going to be let me find a good shad color right here we'll just show a, a green pumpkin hard to beat a green pumpkin that is the spro little john just the original little, little john this is actually more of a more of a clear water spring color with that green pumpkin with that orange belly. But this is the shad profile bait that, I mean, it's just so hard to beat. There's a cellmate color. That's a really good shad profile bait whenever it's, you know, a little bit more stained. But that Spur Little John is just a very, very tough bait to beat. Whenever you're trying to cover water, those fish are on those thread fin shad or any kind of shad like that. So kind of a square bill, like a more of a, like the Fat Papa 55, something with a little bit harder thump, harder vibration. That, to me, 
is more of a crawfish and bluegill type imitation. Obviously when they're around threadfin shad or around shad, they'll eat them also. But it's really a good crawfish and bluegill imitation, Im imitator. That little john has such a tight wobble and has the right profile. It really looks like those threadfin just moving through the water. Because if you watch a shad swim through the water, not any exaggerated movement. There's no big wide wobble. It almost looks like it's not even kicking at all and it just glides through the water is what it really looks like which is why a spy bait works so good sometimes. But that Little John is the closest action to that that you can get and really have a four-wheel drive. So you can throw that thing on rocks, gravel. I mean, when the, uh, we have some drawdown in these lakes, I throw it under docks, throw it in laydowns, throw it in everything. But it just really imitates those fish really, really well this time of year. I usually step it up a little bit this time of year because I am throwing it in really heavy cover a lot of times, like tree stuff. I'm usually going to throw it on 12 or 14-pound Sunline Shooter. And that keeps it a little bit shallower which is good because those fish are pretty shallow but it also gives me a lot more strength whenever i'm you know trying to get those fish out of cover because they really do like to be around wood and really big rock this time of year don't really know why but it seems like they want to be around that type of stuff that kind of heavy cover stuff so rod i throw that on 7-1 envy cranking rod and then a 6.6 to 1 gear ratio inception reel like i said 12 to 14 pound sunline shooter really good setup for those square bill crank and some people are gonna say well that's not really a square bill well it's not really a square bill it's kind of like a little hybrid flat side and square bill but i consider it a square bill i put it in my square bill box i got fat hobble 55s in here got a couple other brands but for the most part that's kind of been the square bill that's been taking over for me lately but this is a really really good bait going into fall when those shads start getting up shallow those bluegills start getting up shallow really good bait to just cover water with if you're in an eight hour tournament and generate some really big bites on it you're not going to go out there and catch 30 or 40 typically but you can catch some really big ones and it can be really consistent a lot of times this time of year too now we all know this time of year can be tough now i'm acting like you're gonna just go throw a, a topwater hank and a spro little john and catch them all day sometimes it's not like that you know sometimes you might get a bite or two on this a bite or two on that and then you got three hours left in the tournament and you need a couple more bites so what are you going to do well you gotta go a little bit more finessey. So right here, I got another box. The BFF, this is the 13 Fishing BFF. That does not mean best friends forever, but if you fish a lot of tournaments and travel around, a six inch straight tail worm will quickly probably become your best friend ever, best friend forever, but it's really called the Blunt Force Finesse Worm. This is called, that. the one I just showed you, it's called a black and tan color, but my favorite way to fish it this time of year, I'm from, I'm from the South, I'm from Alabama, so you know we throw a dang shaky head a lot. Steel catches them. It's always caught them really good, and it still catches them, and it catches big ones. This is not a limit filler type of bait. It People think it is. I have caught some giant bass on this thing. I mean, I've been in a tournament for where I've thrown a frog down the bank or throw a frog in grass and stuff, and I'd have me some two-and-a-half, three-pounders, pick up a shaky head, just try to fill a limit or something, and end up catching a six pounder on it, a five pounder on it, whatever. I've caught so many big ones on this bait. Just a really, really good bait to throw this time of year. This is the Blunt Force Finesse Worm, it's a six inch. This is the Untamed Tackle Shaky Ace. That's what this is. Brand new shaky head. I designed this thing really for skipping. You can see how it's got that head profile right there and the bait is completely kind of concaved inside the head. So there's no extra drag on the worm or anything as it's skipping across the water. Really, really good skipping shaky head. If y'all have used the ace jig, y'all know how well that jig skips. It's like it walks on water. This thing right here is very similar to that, but it's in a shaky head form. So a little bit lighter one is better. An eighth, a three sixteenths, they skip a little bit better. I have a quarter right here, because I will throw it out in the tips of some of these trees and stuff like that, but it's just a really, really good bait this time of year to go grind on. So <clears throat> another thing to consider this time of year, something that I did not talk about, is profile this time of year is everything. You can see the soft plastic that I'm gonna throw this time of year, six inch straight tail worm. The deal with that is when it's cold or pre-spawn, anything like that, they seem to want a lot of bulk on the baits. That's why jigs work so good that time of year. Big bulky creature baits with a lot of appendages work really good when it's cold, but in the summer, and in the late summer or in the fall, it seems very, very important that they like more slender types of baits. That's one of the main reasons why I want to throw a topwater walking bait like this. It's a small profile as far as 
you know, like as big around as it is, but it's still long profile. That seems to be a really big key this time of year is they want something a little bit more long and then skinny, like long and slender. So that seems to be what really triggers those big fish. So I'm not going to be flipping a big giant creature bait or I'm not going to be dragging, you know, a big giant bait out here flipping on these bluffs and stuff i would definitely be throwing something like this just seems like they don't commit when they get on those shad really good this time of year they don't commit to that bulky stuff until they it gets cold the water gets a little more stained up from the rain and stuff in the fall and the winter so that is three of my favorite baits for this time of year if i had to go all over the place now you get let me pick the certain lake we're going to and let me see I might change it up a little bit, but for the most part, these are three that if I go anywhere in the southeast, I know I'll be able to catch them on. So I didn't tell y'all what. I have a few questions. You have a few questions? Yeah. I didn't tell them what rod I was going to throw this on, though. You didn't tell them what rod the Hank was on either, I don't think. No, I didn't. I was going to do that, too. Okay. So this is a 7 foot 3 medium fast envy. This, this shaky head has a gamakatsu hook in it, super sharp. You don't have to throw it on a very heavy rod. This is a medium, it's got plenty of backbone to get the hook set with this shaky head. You know, some shaky heads that have a bigger gauge wire, you got to throw it on a medium heavy spin rod or something like that or else you're going to lose too many of them. But this has a light enough wire hook, but still, it's a, it's a pretty decent size hook, but it's a light enough gauge wire that you're going to be able to penetrate that hook very easily with a 7 foot medium. This is a 7.3 medium, but anything between a 6.10 to a 7.3 medium, medium heavy, all that's going to be really good for the shaky head. This has a 12 pound Sunline braid to 10 pound sunline shooter leader this is 2500 spin reel high gear ratio and then the haint like miss hunter said i throw this on a seven foot three medium omen casting rod with a eight to one gear ratio 13 fish and inception 30 pound sunline x plasma asaji braid i don't know if i've ever pronounced that right in my life but that's what it sounds like so hunter you got some questions for me i just have one question all right so i'm editing lacrosse the other day right mm -hmm. And usually it's like a top water lake, but I noticed on day three that you were kind of finesse fishing in the vegetation. Mm -hmm. What were you throwing there? And and why did you decide to pick up the spinner rail on the last day? So I had a place on lacrosse that was side of grass bed, a, a grass mat that had some duckweed blown into it, and I had another group of grass mats that I had some really big bites in on days one and two, and, and on days three. But day one, late in the day, I went to this place. And I'm not sure if this is what it was, but I believe I found a perch bed. There was holes in the ground, holes around stumps, all this type of stuff in this little sandy. It wasn't really sand, it was like sand and clay in the middle of eelgrass. And there was little holes in it. And there was perch in every single hole for like 100 yards. And I went in there on day one of the tournament and I started seeing bass swim around. So I picked up a wacky rig and I just started throwing it around, pitching it around to the bass I seen swimming or just pitching it around to any isolated cover that was in them holes and stuff so and i started catching them so it became a really consistent way for me to catch some fish on days one and day three of the tournament so on day three i really committed to trying to get five big bites on that frog and i caught a really big one early but then i had some missed opportunities lost a couple so it was like 11:45, and i ran down to my perch bed which i could be dead wrong on that i'm not saying 100 percent that's what it is i don't fish around perch that much but that's what i believe it was so i ran down to it started throwing that wacky rig around and ended up catching me you know four keepers really quickly turned around and went back up and started throwing the frog again and some and some duckweed and some vegetation stuff so i mean it was just kind of one of those things where that time of year like i said they don't want that big bulky moving stuff it was a you know really slender long worm wacky rig just pitch around those holes and those fish you know can't resist it that this time of year because they are up there hunting this time of year like they're up there trying to eat the problem is the reason it gets tough is they get so keyed in on those little shad that it's very difficult to trick them but they're there and they're trying to bite and they're trying to eat they just get really conditioned to that small little bait usually our lakes are really clear this time of year there's not a lot of rain this time of year from about july august september seems like not a ton of rain like there's rain you know a few times but it's not like super heavy rain to stain it up so it seems like our lakes are clear they get around that shad and it gets tough to bite them so that's why that spinning reel kind of plays like that's why it's kind of the crutch this time of year is because you really got to finesse them because they're there and they're hungry they're just conditioned to those little bitty tiny shad any other questions nope that's my three september baits my three September BFFs.